Hi guys and welcome back to the channel at VAG Technic. In this video, as you see, we remove an engine from a Audi S4 B7 in this case. On the next ramp, again, engine removal from an RS4 B8.5. And, and on the first ramp, another V8 from a B6 S4. So in this video, as I was saying, there is a bit of a problem with this dying breed of engine and they are getting old. Also, the other problem is that the BBK and BAT engine code was actually built only for a couple of years. And also the other problem is that the cylinder head set up for the whole timing chains and everything is just only for this engine and nothing else. So the other engine sort of share bits here and there. The only thing what's pretty much the same and is sharing with the other platform is the middle chain and the tension of it, the chain for the oil pump, air conditioning and power steering, which is lovely, but that's not any good to you if you need to replace everything, including the cylinder head stuff, and you can't get the stuff for it. So the situation what we run into now at the moment is, as you probably know on the website, whoever wants to do the job himself, we are selling a full kit what you need with all the gaskets. And at the moment we did stop the sales on the BBK engines because we are struggling ourselves. So one particular day, not a long time ago, I was on the phone with TPS making an order and I received the worst information what can a car mechanic specializing on these engines can get. And that means part is obsolete. So this plastic is very special. I'll uh, explain you in a minute why it's very special. And unfortunately, that is the plastic or the slider which goes on the cylinder head right over there. And it's obsolete. So unfortunately, the engine just can't live without the slider plastic in here because I'll show you in a minute why, because uh, we have all the plastic guides which were removed from this engine on the table. So typical problem as well, like I mentioned every time, uh, we are checking the camshaft adjusters because it's always 50-50 if they are completely worn or they are in the condition when we don't recommend to put them back in the car. In this case, uh, the plate seems to be fine. I don't think it's like worn out, worn out, but you can tell that the opposite one is worn out. Uh, the only reason for that is that the plastic washer, which is between the camshaft adjuster and the spring, which is in here, and that spring go in there, is just disappeared. So one of them had a broken one, which is already gone because it's just a piece of plastic and the other one just disappear somewhere into the oil system. So as you seen on the footage, when we strip the engine down, they've actually removed uh, the camshaft adjuster units. You can see that the strainer here actually have a hole there. That's because of all the debris. We already cleaned up the sump where you've seen the pickup pipe for the oil pump and everything. So that is done. But again, we can't really guarantee what's the condition of the bottom end and stuff. In this case, the owner booked the car only for timing chain replacement, but unfortunately, as usual, the reality has strike and there's more things we need doing. So we are using his maximum budget, financial budget, to do as much as we can so the bare engine is usable and can go back into the vehicle. However, you can probably tell there's a very poor condition of these plastic guides and sliders for the timing chain. So you can see how the chain was actually biting in them. And by my opinion, this was just a poor service. Long live oil, because you can see the top part where the chain sits just done a huge groove into the plastic guide and it fully eat them up. So all the broken plastic end up in the sump. That was clean up. But yeah, we don't know where the rest of it. Hopefully most of it was in the filter, the oil filter and just a few bits here and there went into the oil system and let's hope everybody will not make any internal damage on the bearings, for example, and some other critical components. So all of them are like that, unfortunately. But the main topic, why we saying that these old dinosaurs would not last long because the parts are getting obsolete 
And this is the first plastic guide, which is obsolete at the moment, which is for the cylinder head. It goes like this, hopefully, yes. So when we find out it's obsolete, uh, we did contact everyone who was actually supplying these plastic brackets and guides. We buy out the whole stock in Europe from Slovakia, Czech Republic, France, Germany, UK. We have probably last 10, 11 of them left and that's it. You can see it's uh, <laughs> quite funny made material. I will probably do it from full plastic. And if you're wondering now, we live in 21st century and there is something called like 3D scanning and printing. Yes, there is. But the companies who I contacted, they are just not willing to make the plastic for us because it's like a copyright. You can't just copy and paste something, especially for automotive business, what I found out. So everybody turned me down as soon as they seen the picture, what it is, and they've seen the Audi logo there. China is doing it somehow. It's getting away with it. Cheeky buggers. But I can't get them from China because uh, they're selling the whole kit and it's uh, not really cheap. And I just don't want to buy the whole kit and just be using one plastic slider of it. So the other thing is on the plastic guide over here, it says PA66, which is the material from what is made of. And I did find out it's a very hard nylon and the plastic is quite good uh, heat resistance uh, all sort of temperatures so low temperatures high temperatures it's a really good material for chains like a slider and it's really hard material as well of course over the years how it's go through the cycles uh, hot cold hot cold it will get fragile and long oil intervals will definitely not help them because uh, when you have oil full of carbon and full of debris it will just become like a grinder so it will cut through the plastic basically so oil is very important um, in this case unfortunately the owner well unfortunately i understand the situation it's a b7 not everyone want to spend fortune on them because at the moment the market in the uk is quite bad uh, the cars are very cheap to get and why would you spend million pounds on something was not worth the money So in this situation, which is doing the timing chains uh, The valipan gasket which is common to leak uh, with the free oil check valves uh, We're just gonna do the water pump and everything else like the suspension arms subframe CV boots the small things what can be done later uh, We will not do it. So the other bbk engine which is over there that will be a full scent so the owner wants to keep the vehicle as a future classic which is probably a good idea because this is a quite rare color it's the british racing green i think i don't like the color but it is something else it's, it's a different color compared to the other ones and in this case the bbk engine was in a similar condition so again, all the plastic guides and everything were broken inside. Uh, the camshaft adjuster, how it was worn out. Uh, we don't see it very often, but they were completely worn out. So basically the hole in the camshaft adjuster has like 45 uh, degree slope and the pin was just uh, moving himself out whenever it won. There was loads of fault codes in the engine ECU, like incorrect coloration and all the adjusters were showing like duty cycles and stuff. So he wants to do everything on this engine. So we will be doing uh, suspension arms, new clutch, new dual mass flywheel, new water pump, camshaft adjuster units, the diamond washers, reseal everything, new water pump, clean up everything, put it back in. So this will be a sort of like a small restoration. There are still things like Re suspension, what needs doing because nobody done that for last 24 years. But yeah, something interesting. Unfortunately, we do them less and less and less because there's less cars left on the market and all of them uh, end up in a car heaven. So we'll see how it goes in the future. Ideally, uh, we want to be buying the nylon material, like uh, plastic bricks, and we're just going to get a machine shop to basically uh, cut them out for us. So it will be like a full plastic guide with not the fancy thing to make it light. 
but just to do it on the purpose like to have it and keep the engines running as long as possible. I'm not sure for how long the other plastic guides will be available, but we were thinking even if the plastic guide is actually not there, if it's necessary to have it in there because the chain for this cylinder head, if we will just make it a tiny bit shorter, maybe uh, the old tensioner will have probably enough power or strength to tension the chain in between these two points so the chain will be not rattling and making any funny noises. I don't think without that the chain will be touching something here. Uh, the main reason why I think this guide and the other guy on the cylinder head is there is to prevent the chain from jump over this sprocket here because as you all probably know when the engine is run running there's no oil pressure and once it will build up the oil pressure it's fine but while it will get to the condition with full oil pressure the chain might actually do a wave and it can jump over the camshaft adjuster here on the sprocket there so that was one option uh, the other option was to adjust that guide to go on there but ideally best option is just to make this plastic guide uh, with someone who's willing to help us so that's the sort of update on the bbk uh, like I said, we did, we did bought all of them which were available even from TPS. So right now we have in stock about 10 of them. The one which are obsolete, the other ones are not obsolete yet. So these are the ones which are obsolete. And the other ones for the cylinder head we buy all of them which were available at the factory in Germany. So I'm not sure for next time if we will try to make the order if it's going to go obsolete. Nobody knows. It's always like 50-50 if they will decide it's too old and people are not buying them or over some, some years they just stop making them because it's business. I don't know what we're going to do then or what will people do, what we will do because we bought a few of them actually and uh, <laughs> uh, why we will have S4s and we can't do the chains on them. But yeah, it's, it's getting to the point when even uh, coolant hoses are a bit of a problem. They are obsolete, you can't get them, especially on these cars, there's different diameter on one end, different diameter on the other end. And it's quite hard to connect those two components when you have two different diameters on, on each end. So it's something interesting to do. Of course, everything is sort of doable remanufacture and this and that, but it takes time and money. And especially if you will not take a larger amount of numbers, uh, one piece will probably cost a million pounds. So so yeah but we'll see how it goes uh right now we're just gonna do at least uh, one timing change or probably on that one uh that's probably ready and just to show you how the whole kit looks like and everything again and uh, we're just gonna put it back into the vehicle then so let's get to it and i opened the camshaft adjusters as you can probably tell they're a bit worn this is the top plate uh, and this is the bottom plate so this one is sort of like worn but it's not that bad still but the second one is completely dead guy so that's why we're checking them because there's 50 50 chance they can go and here we are this is the gaskets from the camshaft adjuster unit you can see that the paint is peeling off which is not really good for the oil system so we put new gaskets along with the diamond washers and meanwhile i broke the bolt so luckily i managed to heat it up and unscrew it so i didn't have to drill it out so make my life a bit easier and here we are installing the first timing chain on along with the RS4 upgraded brackets. So you can see that the RS4 brackets are literally part metal and part plastic, which is much better design and should last longer because every single time we just seen the mine bracket that it's broken. So next up is the second chain for the oil pump, power steering and air conditioning. And as a last thing, I'm installing the guides uh, and everything for the cylinder heads. So everything was tied to the Newton meter spec and we will be ready soon to basically tie all the bolts down for the camshafts. So here we are, we have everything ready to do the timing. So the locking pin for the crank is over there. We have the plates on the cams so we can tie it down. Okay, so we tied the bolts down for the camshafts and I'm turning the engine now just to double check my work if the timing is correct. 
I don't recommend to do the job without the timing tools absolutely at all, especially for the plates for the camshaft adjusters, which is for the camshaft position sensor. So if you not get it right, you will just have incorrect coloration or the engine might misfire and do some funny things. So we have to put the timing tools back on now. And as you can see, they clip on nicely. So we have this from the back. There are another two in the front where you've seen and the crankshaft pin is from underneath of the block. So the timing was checked out. The next step we will put the timing chain covers on. Before I do so, I will degrease the surface one more time. We are using Dirko silicon, which is good as a heat resistance. We never had a problem with it. And I did also help Philip a bit with the RS4 engine to put the chain cover back on. And we're just gonna continue with our engine now. So again, all the gaskets for the top chains uh, covers were replaced, so the metal ones and the O-rings. And once all that done, uh, we can continue in the middle of the engine. Uh, so we are replacing the Valipan gasket, what I'm putting on now, along with the three oil check valves, which is literally like two one-way valves and one like a spray jet. So again, everything was tied down to a Newton meter spec with new gasket for the oil filter housing and the new oil filter is coming in. Uh, we also replaced the intake manifold gaskets, the metal ones, as you can see. And then I can move on to the water pump and all the O-rings which are on the engine block. So we are replacing the water pump as a whole unit. You can probably get a thermostat separate, but we just replace it as a whole unit because sometimes uh, the O-rings are quite bad and they can leak. So that's all done. Rear crankshaft seal is coming on along with new dual mass flywheel clutch and the pressure plate. Again, everything tied to the Newton meter spec. And of course, if you're doing such a big job, we will use these NGK Genuine spar plugs. So then we can finally start putting the gearbox back on, which is a bit hard, especially when you're on your own, but we did manage to find a way. So the gearbox is coming on nicely, everything is tied on there, and now I can finally move on to the rest of the piping and loom and all the accessories we have to come on. Uh, while I'm doing this, I'm putting new O-rings for the mine pipe going to the cylinder head and also I replacing quite loads of hoses and vacuum pipes on the engine because they just crack and disintegrate over the years. Especially the rubber pipes and hoses, they don't really like uh, the oil leaking on them. But uh, if we can get them, we always replace them. So here's the engine ready to go in and we don't have the front end off as usual because it's in the way the engine is quite tight in the engine bay and unfortunately we have a problem so the slave cylinder what i replace is the wrong one so for today we are done guys <laughs> we have to order another one which will be in a couple of days so this is why we have to stop working on saturday the slave cylinder which was in the car original order with the clutch is the wrong one you can probably see the difference that the connection is uh, much longer for the hydraulics. That's why the engine is still stuck on the ramp, just on the trolley. So we have more space to remove it because otherwise it's absolute pain to do it from underneath. And we can finally continue, put the engine back in and then with the front end and everything. And after two days I can continue. So the slave cylinder is back in there. We also bleed the clutch while we have the space in there. And I still have to do one very important thing when the engine is finally in place. Okay guys, so the oil sump is removed, reason for that is we found the broken plastic, so as soon as one of the bracket is broken we always take the sump off to clean it up because the last thing we want to have is low oil pressure or some debris sucked into the oil pump which will make even smaller debris which can go everywhere in the vehicle. This is the oil sump, so we have all the broken plastic in there, so definitely every single time you've seen a broken plastic in the car or in the engine it's good to remove the oil sump and clean it all up when it comes to internals mm, i don't see anything wrong with it it is a used engine on the end of the day so nobody knows what the conrod bearings are like and stuff but uh, we have to all hope that it will run at least for a while after such an investment so we're gonna clean up everything and let's continue even after I drain out all the oil, you can probably tell there's quite loads of stuff in the sump, like uh, plastic, old silicon and whatever. So it's really good to actually take it off and make sure it's properly cleaned up before we actually put fresh oil in there and start the engine up. So the sump and the engine was cleaned up from the silicon, the grease and tied back into the engine block. 
uh, we'll be still replacing the lower suspension arms so right now i'm putting the front end on you probably did spot that i put the new rubber like engine mount in the front and after i put all this plastic and the front crash bar i can finally put the front bumper on so from underneath there's quite a lot of things that needs to be put on like piping hydraulics for the power steering exhaust clamps prop shaft dry shafts so there's quite a lot of running around and to do things but we are finally finishing off guys and before we start the engine we're just gonna crank it to make sure we have oil pressure and then we can start it up Okay guys, so I'm just coming from uh, the MOT. MOT is basically some kind of a technical check on the vehicle, which in the UK needs to be done every year. Uh, unfortunately and luckily, because some cars are completely dead traps in this country. And I've done first couple of miles in the S4. I must say sort of fine. Uh, I did notice there are few things that probably will need sorting in the future. The main issue what I'm seeing at the moment is that the rear differential, especially on the full lock, is making uh, some funny noises. So that definitely unleash will need an oil change and look at it because uh, according to the paperwork the car had no MOT for over two years, I believe. So yeah. But it's back on the road. Yeah, we've done as much as we can in a certain budget, what we had like an allowance, I would say. And the car's driving fine, it's going straight, everything is cool. Engine sounds lovely, which is the main thing. It is pulling fine. So from that point, I'm happy. But um, we actually started the video on the B7 and we are finishing the video in the B6. Reason for that is uh, I actually stripped down the B6 first and then I was like, I might actually do a video about it because also the owner of the vehicle did ask me like if it's gonna be on YouTube, so it will be on YouTube. So we have a bit of a lovely memory for too much money on the internet. And yeah, like I was saying in the video, it is getting a problem with these B6, B7, all the old special cars, high performance cars uh, that we are running out of parts. So. I don't want to make a panic or anything, but unfortunately, we do have the last brackets what you've seen currently in the, in the whole UK, in the whole Europe, because I did really buy the whole stock out, whatever was available in France, Germany, etc., etc., etc. I did bought. So you have no other options right now than uh, come to us, unfortunately, or you have to find some kind of a replacement, which so far I wasn't very lucky to find any replacement. I know there's a kit in China for like $600, but I wouldn't trust it, especially when it comes to those oil tensioners. And for 600 quid uh, to buy the whole kit just for a one bracket is a bit silly. So we are working currently on a solution. Uh, I don't have a solution yet, but I am working on it, trust me. And I'm really hoping we will be able to keep these old dinosaurs on the road for long as possible and especially there's lots of people out there who love these cars because it's a v8 in the manual it's quite lovely to drive and it's a four-wheel drive so in case you have a bit of a snow it will it will help you out of a trouble so it's a it's a lovely car yeah the only thing what's killing at the moment is the road tax and unfortunately the maintenance because all of them are getting to 20 plus years and they need doing as you seen on the video. So when it comes to the free cars, you seen two, the third left, because uh, we don't wanna be giving people fake hopes like, oh yeah, don't worry, we'll sort it out for 3000 pounds, everything will be fine. And then we'll strip it down and just give you a bill for 10. 
Yeah, we try to warn everyone who's coming to us, like what's the average bill, what's the common faults on them. What needs doing when the engine is coming out, what we're struggling with and what might the total bill be when absolutely everything will go wrong. So loads of people still want to get the job done because it's now or never and uh, that's why the prices are as they are because if you really want to do like everything you can easily get to seven eight nine ten thousand pounds it really depends like how far you want to go with the repair uh, in this case the bill was around eight thousand pounds because we've done the suspension arms we've done the flywheel We've done the clutch kit, the whole timing chain, camshaft adjusters, water pump, the whole middle of the V was resealed, and the hoses. The hoses are a bit of a problem as well because you can't get them no more, and you have to improvise from aftermarket universal things to actually make it work. Because of all the oil leaks, the hoses are just failing apart. They are growing in width, and unfortunately the clip can't hold the amount of pressure from the coolant system they just start leaking around the uh, clip so it is a bit of a pain but yeah i mean this green one is done i think it was a it was a good call to get it done because the color is sort of special i must say it's fully original i didn't see anything what was like respray painted and stuff so uh patrick from sapphire detailing is coming uh, monday to actually do like uh, two stage polishing on it and a full wash inside and out so i'll try to do some footage as well how the car looks before and after i just probably do like an independent video mixed with something else we'll see but yeah at the moment the car is on the road like as a filth unfortunately how it was taken out from the barn when the owner stored it or have it i don't know it's just since like a bit moldy a bit dirty and stuff but uh, it will be done, it will be clean, so the owner will come and collect the vehicle like it's nice and clean, everything is done to it, everything is sorted, and it's not a smelly car just with new engine parts. So that's how it goes. Uh, I'll keep you updated with the parts. Uh, I think so far we are capable to do another probably five engines and uh, we really have to find a solution quickly, otherwise we won't be able to actually carry out the job so we'll see how that goes um, when it comes to the blue b7 what we start the video with the owner had a sort of a limited budget so we literally just sort out necessary stuff on the engine and whatever we'll need doing like afterwards like the hoses suspension arms or whatever uh, we're just gonna get it sorted after so we'll see how it goes but uh, yeah, so far uh, the engine will be sorted and we will see how it goes in the future. We also did have uh, one more, I think it was a B6, I think it was a B6. And um, that car actually came for a diagnostic and the owner of the vehicle was giving some kind of information that it's just need doing this and that and it won't be that expensive and da 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 and unfortunately yeah we done the diagnostic the timing was like completely out bank one was like minus 14 uh, bank two didn't even actually read the number and and the car like uh, didn't run very well so we did tell them as well like how much it can cost and what can happen and this and that and he decided to probably sell the car i don't know what he's gonna do so we didn't done uh, anything to that one just a diagnostic really so i understand like every owner of the s4 have some kind of a different budget to do the car have some kind of a different opinion what they want to do and stuff so and on the end of the day it's uh, quite loads of money for a b6 b7 s4 to do maintenance for 10 grand it's just absolutely mental especially in these days when i'm not sure how in the europe or how in the us but currently you can actually buy uh, S4, B6 uh, with sort of normal mileage yeah, for like three and a half up to four thousand pounds and some of them even say that the chains are already done which is quite cheap to be honest 
but yeah um, that's the reality with them so if you really want to get it done it's more like a very far future investment to have like a classic car with a V8 and the manual and it will definitely cost you a fair bit of money to at least put it into some kind of a condition so it will last to get to the point it will be a future classic so yeah so thank you for watching guys uh we will probably see you in another video with something more interesting less interesting i don't know but uh, that's the update with the s4 bbk b80 engines and uh, i'll see you in another video so thank you for watching again and take care for now see ya